What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video today We are back with another 10-year realistic rebuild and today we're gonna be doing a team I haven't done a rebuild on in so long. It's been since September since I've done a Rockets rebuild So today we're jumping in we're doing a 10-year Rockets realistic rebuild. This should be fun. Let's go before we get into today's video Make sure you guys drop a like on this one. Of course subscribe to if you're new to the channel as always greatly greatly Appreciated we're on the road to 30,000 subs We're trying to get to that before this year ends and we're like less than 300 subscribers away So if you're not subscribed you greatly appreciate it if you hit that sub button as we be uploading six days a week It's been a lot of fun over here, but today like I said, we're doing a 10-year Rockets realistic rebuild. There's a lot to like here when it comes to Houston. Got Jalen Green, Shagoon, Kevin Porter Jr., Tari Eason is going to be a nice building block going forward. Jabari Smith Jr., of course. The one guy that I do want to kind of make a move on potentially is like Eric Gordon. If I could trade him away, maybe I will. Uh, we could probably do that right now, to be honest with you. Let's just start out this video with maybe making a trade here. So uh, just because I want him gone, I just want to just continue to develop these guys as much as possible. I feel like Eric Gordon would be that guy at the trade deadline. You could maybe trade away. There's a lot of guys, you know, there's maybe some teams out there that have some bad contracts they wouldn't mind throwing in. So if you look at maybe this kind of trade where the Kings maybe look for more help, they get Eric Gordon out of it, I guess. You got the Knicks offering Mitch Robinson. You also have the Mavericks offering me Tim Hardaway and Bertans. I'm good on that one. The one thing I will say, though, is Eric Gordon's contract is expiring next season. So I don't really want to take on any bad salary. That way we keep our cast base open as much as possible. Although... I don't know if I plan on signing any crazy free agents in free agency. You got the Pistons. You have the Spurs. You have like the Thunder, the Blazers, and then you got like the uh, Wizards offering me Will Barton. I guess you could maybe do something like this where the Wizards maybe thought Eric Gordon was Will better than Will Barton, but I don't know. I feel like the teams that would maybe line up to get Eric Gordon would be like the Mavericks or the Suns, of course. I don't know if I can get the Suns to send me anything, though. So you'd probably have to like Jay Crowder in there and... This probably had to be a three-team deal, and obviously three-team trades in 2K are just so complicated. It's not even funny. So maybe I could try it without Jay Crowder real quick. If not, I'm probably just going to keep Eric Gordon and just let him walk in the offseason. Not that big of a deal. So Eric Gordon, and then they'd have to throw in like, uh, but I'm not going to get what I want out of him. And yeah, they'd have to take on Landry Shaman's contract. So honestly, at this point, we're just going to keep Eric Gordon. It's fine. We'll have him come off the bench now, though. Uh, maybe we don't even play him the rest of the season. Who knows? So they want to start Kenyon Martin Jr., to me, honestly, I want to start Tari Eason. I really do. I want to turn this guy into an absolute stud. I want him to be our 3 and D wing. I want him to turn into like our OG Nobi or whatever it may be. Just develop him like crazy. So now your starting five is going to be Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Tari Eason, Jabari Smith Jr., Shingun, Kenyon Martin, Jay Shante, Eric Gordon, and Garuba, and then Josh Christopher, which has he even been getting minutes in Houston. I don't watch a ton of Houston games. I'm not going to lie to you. So whatever, though. I'm, gonna, I'm done talking. Let's just sit at the end of the season, obviously. We're looking to go all in on the Web and Yama sweepstakes. That's what the Rockets are kind of looking for. And we should have a ton of cap space this offseason. So should be a very good offseason to start this video. You see this, man? This could be you right here. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get more out of the game you're watching. You're picking overs or unders on your favorite players that you love watching each and every day. Let me show you how it works. Prize Picks is available on mobile or desktop, and you basically get to choose two to five players, and you choose over or under on their props that they give you. You pretty much have every sport you can imagine on here. Uh, but let's say I wanted to go ahead and put a bet on Mitchell and Joel Embiid. I want to go more and more on them. If I get it right, I three times my money. Let's say I want to go up to five players, which is the most you can go up to. You can go uh, more or more on all of them, and that's going to 10 times your money. I started with $100, and so far I'm up to $500. i have been uh, having a ton of fun over here on Prize Picks. If you want to go ahead and sign up, link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBULLS or imagine deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. If you deposit $100, you get $200 to work with. Thank you, Prize Picks, for sponsoring today's video. Back to the rebuild. Season number one comes to an end, and obviously, we are not in the playoffs. We kind of figured that'd be the case. I think we got like the 14th seed out west, and obviously, we're turning our attention to the draft lottery. You have the Cavaliers and the Clippers in the final, so this should be interesting as you have the Cavaliers going on to win a championship. Donovan Mitchell was amazing last night against the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, but if we take a look at our player stats for this season to kind of see where we're at, you had 18 from Jalen Green, 15 from Kevin Porter Jr., 13 from Shingoon, 13 from Jabari, 12 and a half, 11, and then 10. So obviously we're going to be getting rid of Eric Gordon and we're going to try to free up some more minutes elsewhere as well. So we'll see how this season's about to look after we're done with this offseason. Because like I said, this could be a huge offseason for us, starting with the draft lottery. So let's go see what this lottery is looking like for us. So obviously we want the number one overall pick or I would take number two because honestly, I wouldn't mind replacing Kevin Porter Jr. with Scooter Henderson if I can, but we'll see where we're at. We got to watch this whole thing to get some lottery luck on our side. So 
Nets number 14. They weren't in the playoffs. That's actually very, very disappointing. I think KD would essentially probably put in his trade request again if they missed the playoffs like that. Number 12, you got the Oklahoma City Thunder. And it is going to be, is that the Clippers pick there? No, it's not. No, because the Clippers made the final. So that's not even on the lottery. So shout out to them. New York Knicks number 11. And that's going to stay the way it is. So far, so good. I think we were projected the fourth pick in this draft. Obviously, like I said, I would love to get number two. I feel like the Rockets love, always, or the Rockets find a way to always, you know, be up there in the lottery very high. So I assume that I can maybe get that luck here. Pelicans number nine, and the Pelicans just jumped up with that Lakers pick, I think. So, yeah, that's not good for us. But number uh, eight for the Washington Wizards, you got them staying. Okay, so it doesn't essentially mean we're out of the top four just yet, but the Pelicans might have kicked us down a little bit. Number seven for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, wow, they jumped up too. That is not good for us. So Kings have moved to the top four. All right, so that probably means we're out here somewhere, and that might be putting us at six, which kind of sucks. Oh, never mind. We're good. So this is going to be the Spurs at number six. And number five, the Orlando Magic. So it looks like we might be in the top four, and we are. So we're in the top four at the very least. I'm, assume, I'm hoping one or two. Give me one or two. I'll be a very happy man, but I highly doubt it. Number four is going to go to the Kings. Okay, we're still in it. Number three, give it to someone else. I'll be happy with one or two to start this video. Please don't be me. Please don't be me. Please don't be the Rockets. Ah, oh, had to be us, of course. We get the third overall pick. Why can I never get lucky? The Pelicans and the Hornets get one and two. That is just... The Pelicans are going to have Victor Webanyama. Wow, that is uh, crazy. Although, I feel like I might be able to convince the Hornets to trade down with me. I might be able to do it. I think I might. I'm going to have to. I'm going to do it. I wanted two, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna trade for two. I really want to do that to start this video. I want to go all in on number two. That being Scooter Henderson, or maybe Webb and Yama falls to me, whatever. I doubt it, but I'm offering this and a couple more first to get two in this draft, and they do agree. So just like that, we move up to number two. That guarantees guarantees us either Scooter Henderson or Webb and Yama. Of course, Webb and Yama is gonna go number one, which means we're gonna have a brand new backcourt of Scooter Henderson and Jalen Green going forward. What does that mean for Kevin Porter Jr.? Well, I'm not really sure yet. I think I might end up trading him away, which might upset some Rockets fans, but I feel like it's for the best uh, having Jalen Green and Scooter Henderson as their backcourt rather than those other two, just because I don't know how much Kevin Porter Jr. is going to develop here in 2K, so that's kind of where I'm at with it. So Jalen Green, Shingun, of course, accepting accepting everybody here. Garrison Matthews, I guess I'm going to decline, and then Eric Gordon, of course, like I said, I'm declining. So it does suck not to get anything for Eric Gordon, but I didn't want to really force anything at the trade deadline and, you know, make something happen that wasn't worth it. So uh, I think the Rockets have a lot of cap space as well, so we might be able to sign a free agent if we want to, but I'm not going to plan on it. So right now you have Kevin Porter Jr. and Scooter Henderson as your point guards. You have Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, which I like, uh, Kenny Martin Jr., Tari Eason, Jay Sean Tate and Jabari Smith Jr. And then you have Shingun and Garuba. So a lot to like here. I guess if there's one position that was kind of weak, not really. I actually like every position. I mean, if I was going to trade Kevin Porter Jr., I guess I would have him like be like coming off the bit or I, I guess I would trade him for a starter. There's really no need to do that right now. So we might just roll with what we got. I don't think I'm going to do anything. Like I said, we could sign a free agent, but I, I like my roster. and I kind of just want to grow with it. So I don't think I'm going to make any crazy trades here. I'm going to keep Kevin Porter Jr. off the bench as my sixth man for now. Uh, he may not like that role, but I think he would shine in that kind of role. So I kind of like it. So Jalen Green's up to an 80, 89. Chingoon's up to an 82. Kevin Porter Jr. Tari Eason's up to an 80. Like I said, I want to develop Tari Eason, and it's working out. Jabari's up to a 79, which is nice. Martin, Gruba, so a lot of good development here. Obviously, we may not win a championship next year, but we're getting to a point where this team is going to develop very, very nicely. So I think with the Scooter Henderson uh, addition, this team is going to be very, very good soon. Luka's going to win MVP, Amon Thompson, Rookie of the Year. Kevin Porter Jr. does win six, man, so he kind of shined in that role, which I kind of like for us, so I'm going to be very, very happy with that. Jalen Green wins most improved player, 32 points per game, which is exactly what you want. I feel like Jalen Green could develop in that kind of player in real life. I would not be surprised at all. The man is an absolute stud, but when I said this team would be good soon, I didn't expect it to be this soon. We got the third seed in the Western Conference. I didn't really show our rotation, but this is what we were running. Scooter Henderson, Jalen Green, Tari Eason, Jabari, uh, Alperin Shingun, Kevin Porter Jr., Jay Shante, Kenyon Martin, and then Garoba. So all around really damn good. Player stats wise, you had 31 from Jalen Green, and then uh, Scooter Henderson only had 16 and a half, 16 from Porter Jr. off the bench, 16 from Jabari, 12 from Shingun, and 11 and a half from Tari Eason. So I don't know if we're going to win a championship this year, but 
Overall, very happy with our performance already. So we get Webb and Yama versus Scoot Henderson in round one in their first year as rookies, which I think is a ton of fun. Don't think we beat the Pelicans here. We're the higher seed, though, so I guess anything is possible. Somebody current round against them, and we are going to beat them in four. So we not only beat them, we sweep them. We might punch our ticket to the Western Conference Finals in year number two with this Rockets team, which is actually really exciting. Now we get the Golden State Warriors, though. This is a team that was obviously carrying on a dynasty. They still have James Wiseman, which I don't know what eventually the Warriors are going to do with him, but he just looks like a bust right now, man. Hopefully he turns it around. But let's see if we can beat them. So in the current round, and we beat them in six, and now we have the battle of the Texas teams in the Western Conference Finals. The fact that we got this this far this quickly is absolutely amazing. That just shows you what kind of foundation the Rockets have built. At least 2K is giving them credit for it. So so my current round against Luka and the Mavericks, and we are punching our ticket to the finals in year number two with a backcourt of Jalen Green and Scooter Henderson. And now I got to play the Celtics. I don't know if we win a championship in year two, but that would be amazing. And wow, wow. Year two, we get our first championship with this Houston Rockets squad. And what what more do I need to do? This team is already built so nicely. It's just a matter of keeping everybody and making minor moves here and there. So Rockets have already done the job for me, I guess. 2K loves the Rockets right now, which I, I mean, I got to be happy about. I think we also have the Nets pick. I don't know if it ended up finishing. I don't know where the Nets finished in the East. So let's see if they were really bad. They were the temp seed, so their pick will be in the lottery. So just more we can add to this Rockets squad. So that is projected to be number eight in this lottery. So I don't know if we get lucky. Let's see. And it is going to be number nine. Okay, and it's a lottery pick still. And then I think we traded our pick away, if I'm not mistaken. So we don't have to worry about our pick. We just have to bet on this Rockets or on this uh, Nets pick. Or the Nets might have our pick. I don't know how it's working right now. I don't know if I traded my... Let me see. Do I have my pick? Because I didn't see it. We have it nine. That's it. Okay. So... All we need to do now is keep Steven as our head coach, fill out this coaching staff, and go to draft night. And then, don't know if there's going to be anything else I need to do this offseason. This team just won a championship, so we should be good. Jumping in this draft to pick someone here at number 9. I don't know if we really need anything, so it might as well just go best player available here, which I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, be honest with myself. I don't know who best player available is because I don't know this draft class too much, but I see the 19 year old and I think it makes sense to maybe take him. We also have like Mikey Williams down here as well, but I'm going to take Mac. I don't know how to say his last name, but I'm going to take the 19 year old here. Who's at the top of the board. I'm going to let my assistant GM take the other ones, but we grabbed a 76 overall. So that's fine. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sign Middleton. Uh, might not sign the 60 overalls. They're not really going to bring anything to the table for me. So uh, Jay Sean Tate at 28 years old. I think I will accept it. There's really no reason to just let him go for nothing. I mean, I could trade him away, I guess, if I need to. We got Kenny Martin Jr. who's a free agent, which he has requested a trade from the Rockets in the past. I don't know what to do with him. Uh, but as far as uh, free agents, so you only have Kenny Martin Jr., which I wouldn't mind bringing him back. Uh, but we'll see where we're kind of at with it. So, Scooter Henderson, Kevin Porter Jr., obviously those are our point guards. I don't know how long Kevin Porter Jr. will want to be a six man. His contract is very friendly where we can keep accepting it, which honestly, I probably will. Uh, but I mean, eventually, if we have to like get rid of them, I guess we can. So it's it's there for the taking if we need to. Christopher and Jalen Green. Uh, we got a new small forward, so we don't really need. Uh, and they got Jay Sean Tate, so we don't really need Kenyon Martin Jr. back. So we could probably just let him go. So honestly, I'm not really looking to do anything this free agency. Just once again, another off season where I don't really need to spend a ton of money. So there's no reason to do it. We kind of have our core as it is. Let's not waste money. Let's you know kind of bank on re-signing these guys we got to make sure we re-sign all these guys and eventually we can make the big move uh if we need to so player progression darius days kenny and martin jr are back in the qualifying offers it's gonna henderson's up to an 86 you got shingun you got tara easton up to an 82 so the the rosters that's just developing which is amazing so gonna run it back again let's see if we can win a championship two years in a row but so far so good so at the end of the season, we end up with the first seed in the West again. This time we won 62 or 61 games, I should say. We didn't have any rewards, so Jalen Green didn't make it like an All-NBA first team or anything, which was a little disappointing. But player stats-wise, you had 26 from Jalen Green, 19 for Jabari, so he's starting to get into his rhythm a little bit, 19 from Scooter Henderson, 15 for Kevin Porter Jr. off the bench, 13 for Tar Eason, 12 and a half from Shingoon. Overall, this roster, like I said, man, it's just developing as much as you really want. I'm very, very happy with how much it's developing, but... We get the Sacramento Kings in round one. Obviously, we're looking to make it back-to-back -back here to see if we can win two championships in a row. They have Vucevic instead of Sabonis now, so I don't know if that will mean anything. So I current round against the Kings, and we are going to beat them in seven. That was tougher than I would have wanted, but now we get the Grizzlies, who have John Morant, you know, Max Schroes, Aaron Williams, and longer, no longer have Desmond Bain. So we have that going for us, which is nice. So it's still my current round against them, and we are going to 
beat them in seven. And now we get a Webb and Yama versus Scooby Henderson series again. But this time that might be reinforced with Dyson Daniels developing now. So we might not win this one, but we'll see. So we cut around and we do sweep them once again. So the Pelicans just don't have anything on us just yet. Now we get the Cavaliers though. Mitchell, Garland, Mobley, Jarrett Allen. So obviously battle the back courts and then battle the front courts. Uh, both teams look really good on paper. So somebody cut around and we are going to lose in seven. So we don't get our second championship here. Also close though. So a lot to be excited about. Again, man, I don't know. Like I know we're going to have to resign someone. I'm pretty sure Jalen Green might be on the last year of his rookie contract. So uh, that'll be a huge step this offseason to resign our guy. But other than that, I don't think we're in the lottery. So we don't have to worry about that too much. And our pick might not even land on us because we traded it away, I think. So the Nets have it. And then we traded... Wait, where did the Nets pick fall? Wow, the Hornets got the fourth pick for Scoona Henderson. So we would have had the fourth pick here if we didn't trade for Scoona Henderson, but that's okay. Still feel pretty good about having Scoona Henderson here. So as far as uh, coaching staff is completely filled out, we don't have to worry about it. On draft night, we don't have to worry about it either. We don't even have our draft pick, and we don't have one at all, which kind of sucks, but we made the move, like I said, to move up. So only two second rounders, not even going to worry about it. Straight to player options we go, and we're going to accept everybody, of course, Middleton, Murray, Washington, Easton, Jabari. So eventually this team is going to get expensive. They really are. This team is going to get expensive fast. We're not going to be able to keep everybody. So like Christopher and Garuba, two guys I'm kind of looking at here. Jalen Green, obviously. Jalen Green and Shingoon, two guys I want. Garuba and Christopher, I might have to move on from them. If they're asking for too much money, we'll see where they're at. If they're asking for like $20 million a year, it's just not going to be able to happen. So uh, she got Shingoon, Jalen Green are going to want some money. So yeah, Kenyon Martin Jr., Christopher, and Gruber are all asking for like $14 million per. So I don't know if I'll be able to get to that. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr. is already making a lot of money off the bench. So obviously, I want to keep these two around. We're not letting them go, that's for sure. But as far as the other guys are concerned, Christopher and Garuba. So we are going to have no backup center, and we're going to have no backup shooting guard. Unless we move like Kevin Porter Jr. or Washington, Washington there, obviously. But I don't think uh, then McKenzie Mac is developing to a 77 overall off the bench for us. So that's kind of nice. Uh, so that's cool. But uh, if we could get like a shooting guard off the bench, you got like a manual quickly. Obviously, like I said, I want to go cheaper here. So if I went out there and signed someone for like a lot of money, it wouldn't make any sense. But Cameron Reddish here off the bench here in Houston might not be a bad idea. He wants around nine million per year. I could probably get away with that Maybe give him like a three year deal over 10. Just be a little bit cheaper than what the other guys are asking for. Yeah, 2K. Let me renounce Jalen Green. That makes a ton of sense. Wait, I have to, I guess. Okay. No, I want to renounce these guys and keep Jalen Green. So I'm not keeping Christopher or Garuba, I guess, which I feel bad about. But uh, I think we're going to just go a little bit cheaper here compared to what those guys were asking for. So going to sign Reddish to be my brand new shooting guard. And obviously, we're matching Jalen Green. The Reddish will be my bench shooting guard, which I like because uh, he has not really found a home, it feels like, for him in real life, man. The Knicks haven't. Knicks have officially kicked him out of the rotation. Shingun wants a bag, but I think I'm going to give it to him, man. Five years, $25 million. Keep him locked up long-term here. Going to keep Shingun. I feel pretty good about that. And then Kenyon Martin's asking for a bag. I don't think I'll get to him, to be honest with you. So now you have your rotation of Twin Henderson, Kevin Porter Jr. Got Cameron Reddish, Jalen Green's back. McKenzie, or Mac. I keep saying McKenzie. It's Mac. Got Tari Eason, Jabari, and then Shingun. So we still need a backup big man. So you got like Jay Sean Tate, who we're familiar with. You got Rui Hachimura here. You got Drew Eubanks, Steven Adams, Thomas Bryant. I could probably just give like a one-year deal out and be fine. I also see Isaiah Hardenstein, uh, which I kind of like the idea of. I feel I was about to say, I feel like I, Isaiah Hardenstein's played in Houston before, and he has. I'll give him a two-year deal. He'll be pretty cheap, so I'll go ahead and sign him to be my backup center. So the team is getting cheaper right now, which kind of sucks, but that's just how we have to go because eventually we're going to have to base Scooter Henderson. We have to keep figuring out what we're going to do with Kevin Porter Jr., I mean, on the last year of Kevin Porter Jr.'s contract, I might have to trade him away because he might be asking for way too much money. But for now, we have him as our sixth man. But it's going to understand Jabari, Jalen Green, all still developing, which is nice. So we'll keep going. So once again, we do make the playoffs, but this time we're not the first seed in the Western Conference. You had uh, actually Jabari Smith Jr. step up big time with 23 points per game, 24 from Jalen Green, 18 from Scooter Henderson, and then you had 12 and a half from Kevin Porter Jr. So this might be the end of Kevin Porter Jr. We're probably going to accept that team option one last time. And I think we might trade him away. I think that's what we're going to do this offseason, unfortunately, for him. Tari Eason, we're going to have to pay, I think. Washington also played some minutes. And if we're going to bring him back, he's going to have to be paid. Shingun, we just paid a lot. Reddish, we paid a lot. Not a lot, but you get what I'm saying. He's here for the long term. So let's keep going to get the Sacramento Kings now. Let's see what they got going on. So we beat them last year, but Whitmore has developed a little bit more. Keegan Murray doesn't develop too much in 2K, it feels like. But let's make current round against them. And we are going to go up 2-0. And we beat them in 7 in round 1. 
Now I get the Memphis Grizzlies, so let's see if we can beat them again and head back to the finals. We are going to jump and beat them in six. Let's go. Oklahoma City versus Houston. They do have Desmond Bain at small forward, which I like that addition for them, but I don't know if I like him playing the small forward. I mean, I guess he could do it. And you got Josh Giddy. So there's a chance we lose this series that DJ Wagner off the bench, and we are going to lose in six. So that is unfortunate, but it was bound to happen. And now we have the Thunder going on to win the championship. So I guess we lost to the team that went on to win it all. So we can, you know, kind of hang our hat on that. That is young. LeBron James retires in Utah, which makes no sense. But hey, it happened. Draft lottery time. I don't know if you have a lottery pick here for somebody. I don't think so. I would have to be a Nets pick, obviously. Um, but it's not looking like it. So we do have uh, the, the Hornets have the 27 pick via the Nets. And then our pick is going to be going to the Thunder. So we don't even have a draft pick this offseason either. Staff signing. You do have Steven. We're going to keep that all the same. We just need to fill this out real quick. And like I said, man, the next thing we're probably going to have to do this offseason, unfortunately, is trade Kevin Porter Jr., I don't know what I want to get unless if he's not going to ask for much money going forward, but I highly doubt it. I think he's going to ask for like a bag and I just can't afford that, obviously, because I would rather pay Scott Henderson over him, to, unfortunately. So I think we do have to trade away Kevin Porter Jr., unfortunately. So I don't know why I jumped into draft night because I think all we have is second round picks. So not going to worry about it. So we got Harrington going number one. We got Hoffman, which I don't care about. Player options. We're going to accept all these and then qualifying offers. Tari Eason is a free agent. Jabari is a free agent. Tata Washington is a free agent, which are three guys I have interest, especially Tari Eason. I definitely want him back. So free agency, uh, Jabari, Tari Eason, Tata Washington, all going to get very, very expensive, like I said. So Kevin Porter Jr., I think I might have to let you go, my friend. Might have to be a little bit of a salary dump here. I, I love your services here, but we're going to have to trade you. Funny enough, I'm going to be trading him to the Memphis Grizzlies for Usman Garuba back. We also get a 2029 first round pick out of it. So we're getting our backup center back, essentially, that will help us win some championships. So welcome back to the Rockets, which makes Isaiah Hardenstein kind of, uh, you know, really no reason to be here anymore. So we could probably flip him away as well. Don't really know what you'd get for him, but if I can get like a second, maybe a first is offered to me. We can go ahead and grab this. This is actually, I don't even free up much money. I was going to say I was going to free up some money, but... The Lakers want to have him for a 2027 first. Uh, but yeah, essentially, I'm just trying to free up a little bit of money here for this free agency. So I'm going to go ahead and try to trade him to Toronto. And uh, actually, I can't do that. So I'm going to go back to it. But I still want to trade Isaiah Hardesty for a salary dump. And it looks like the Lakers, the Grizzlies were offering me a pretty good package. So I'll go ahead and make this trade with the Lakers. And they get Isaiah Hardesty out of it. So that'll be a really good backup center for them. We kind of have our small forward. We don't have our power forward right now, obviously, in Jabari. But uh, we... Do want Washington back, I think. So I think I want all three guys that are sitting here in free agency. Uh, I'm going to pay Washington. I think he's going to take over that Kevin Porter Jr. role we had him for. So it's going to it's gonna be expensive. It's going to get expensive, but I think we got to keep these guys. So Jabari has not gotten an offer yet, but I am going to give him a five-year deal to keep him around in Houston. Uh, he is getting a uh, contract offer, so I'm going to match it. I would have loved to have you know stretched him for over five years. Tar Eason, same thing. He's actually asking, uh, not ask for that much money. So let me see if I can get kind of cheap here. 20.5 over five years. I think that would be a pretty good uh, deal. And then same thing with Washington. Uh, 12 year over five. I actually like that a lot. So kind of like a Kimball Walker contract back in the day to be our backup point guard. I think that'll be kind of cheap. So like that, if we can secure them on that kind of contract, I like it for us. And then I think we just need a power forward where it should be good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, I mean, we don't really need a power forward. So Probably won't even worry about it. You got like Trent and Waffer out here. You got Dario Sarge, Jalen Smith, Kai Jones. I guess we'll just grab depth just in case. We'll give him like a one-year deal. Not going to, you know, have him locked up long-term, but a one-year deal for Kai Jones to be our backup power forward if we need him. I like it. And now we're going to play progression and see how he's treating us. And then obviously, uh, we're going to have to pay uh, Scooter Henderson next year. So it's going to get expensive. We kind of knew that, but our big three is all developed into a 90 overall. Tari Eason has stopped developing, which is kind of unfortunate, but... Still an 83 at your uh, small forward is not bad. Maybe we have to trade Shingun eventually for a better center. We'll, we'll keep going. We'll see how it's going, and uh, we'll see what happens. So we're right back to our winning ways after we made those moves this offseason, 62 and 20. I mean, we were already winning as it was, but obviously we're now the first seed I get. I would assume we're the first seed anyway. So first seed in the Western Conference, take a look at the player stats, 26, 24, 24. So our big three just absolutely doing work. Jabari Smith Jr. has developed very nicely. And everyone is still 25 or younger here. So we are in for the long term. Tar Eason with 12. Shingun with 10. Four and a half. And then 10 from Max. So obviously looking to win our second championship of the video here. We do get the Lakers in round one. They have AD and Giannis. 
together in the front court. That's actually insane with Jamal Murray, Christie, Isaiah Evans. I feel like the Lakers always end up upsetting me when they're the eighth seed, so I would not be surprised if it happens here, but thankfully 2K's got my back and we don't lose. And now we get the Kings that we keep beating, but maybe this time around they're going to finally get us. They did get Bam out of bio. They no longer have De'Aaron Fox. They have Davion Mitchell instead there, but we'll see what happens. Somebody current round against them, and they are going to blow a 3-0 lead. I thought we lost, but no, we beat them in seven. And now we get the Pelicans, who have not won a game on us in the playoffs. So let's see if we can keep that trend going so many current round and this time they do beat us in six so we got evan mobley webb and yama as your conference finals mvps and you have the cavaliers going on to win a championship which kind of sucks but i mean eventually i might look into trading shingun i don't really want to do it but uh what, what am i doing what i didn't mean to do that okay now we're getting into the off season so let's get straight to the lottery and uh i don't know man we're, we just have to do something because right now we're not winning championships we did get eliminated at the conference finals so like at least we made it that far, but we got to do something that puts our team over the top. And it looks like we have two first round picks in this draft, which is kind of nice. So obviously we'll probably use those to our advantage. We're going to fill this out and I might look to upgrade the center position. Not that I have anything against Shingun, but maybe that's just where I have to go with this. Scratch all that stuff I said about Shingun. If I was going to trade him, I would want to get somebody very younger because I mean, the man is like 24 years old. There's really no reason to just get rid of him for nothing. So it looks like we're in the draft here. I don't even know who I'm drafting at this point. We're in the year 2027. I have no idea who's good or not. So we do get a 68 overall and a 70, I guess. We'll sign them both, whatever. Mac will accept on his last year. Then Scoot Henderson, Chris Murray. I don't think Chris Murray's really done anything for us. And then you got Luca here. But Scoot Henderson, obviously the important guy to bring back here in Houston. And then uh, obviously, you know, maybe we have money to sign. No, we don't. So obviously Scoot Henderson is going to be the biggest priority here. No reason to bring anybody else back. So if we can just get Scooter Henderson back, I'm chilling. So five-year five year deal coming to Scooter Henderson. That's what I want. And I'm going to make sure that is going to happen. So Scooter Henderson, bring him back to Houston. He's getting an offer. I wanted him for five years, but unfortunately, uh, he didn't accept my five-year deal. Instead, he signed an offer sheet. But now we're stuck with what we got. So Washington, Scooter Henderson, Jalen Green, Cameron Reddish. You got Tari Eason, Mack. You got Jabari. And then you have Shingun and Garuba. So... Shingun, like I said, I could trade him away, but I mean, you really can't get a better center for this young 86 overall. So there's really no reason to do that. So let's just go straight to player progression. Maybe Tari Eason is the guy we move away for a better small forward. We can take a real quick look before we go into this next season, because obviously we've only won one championship in this video. And yes, we are contenders every year. Eason's up to an 84 overall. I don't want to trade him away, but I mean, if there's a better small forward for us, maybe we have to entertain the idea of it. Uh, so let's see if there's anything that's just remotely interesting to take. So like Johnny Davis, no, Cameron Johnson, Lively, Kenyon Martin, Claxton, Dort, Quinn Grimes, Evdia. Desmond Bain is interesting, I guess, to say the least, and 89 overall. He is 29 years old, though, so this would essentially be going for a championship for one year. Uh, so I don't know if I like the idea of that. The other one that was interesting was like Justin Edwards, but I don't know what his deal is, and he's going to have to be paid soon. He's only averaging five points. So I think we're better off just sticking with what we got, unfortunately, and hoping it works out for us. Again, I could do this trade, get Desmond Bain, but then we're kind of uh, probably bad after this season, which I don't want to be in that position. So it's going to keep relying on my big three to get it done. Hopefully this year they do. I had to show this real quick because Luka Doncic apparently is in a Miami Heat, Heat uniform now, which is kind of weird, but hey, it, it makes things interesting, I guess. But we're back as a second seed in the Western Conference. Obviously... We're seeking to win championships. Our big three is out here doing work. Mac ended up being a really good player off the bench for us. 12 from Tari Eason, 9 from Washington, 9 from Operation Shingun, 9-7 in a block. So he's up to an 87 overall. Like I said, man, you really can't ask for much of a young center like that. Reddish is going to be a free agent this offseason. So I don't really know what's going to happen at our backup shooting guard spot. But now we get the Phoenix Suns in round one who have uh, Kevin Durant in Phoenix. So I guess Kevin Durant finally got his wish. He ended up in Phoenix, but no longer with Devin Booker. So... I hope we take care of them. We are going to sweep them in four. And I'll get the Mavericks. So I can't I can't even imagine what the Mavericks have now, no longer with Luka Doncic. They have Kyrie Irving and Shea. Okay. And then they have Nasir Cunningham, Boozer, and Jarrett Allen. Keldon, what kind of Maverick squad is this? They just like retooled the... Okay. Very good roster. Shea is now the face of the Mavericks. Who's the face of the Thunder? DJ Wagner, Desmond Bain. Okay. Miles Turner. Okay, so either way, we have tough matchups going forward because uh, the Kings have Bam Adebayo, Kendall Brown, 
Yeah, I don't know if we even beat the Mavericks here. Game one, we're up one to zero, beat them by eight, 27 and 10 from Jalen Green. Game two, they even it up because this Mavericks squad's kind of stacked, to be honest with you. Can we beat them though? Three to two, beat them in six. Come on, let's go. We got past them. So honestly, now I get the Kings. So we've been able to beat the Kings every time, but maybe that changes this time around. We have AJ Griffin off the bench for Evan Bleep Brooks. You got Indiana and Brooklyn on the other side. I don't even know what the... I mean, we got to see what the Brooklyn Nets have at this point. But down 2-1. to one, So maybe we don't even get that far. Maybe we should go to an 8-man rotation here. See if that changes anything. That kicks Reddish out of the rotation. Game 4, we need to win. We win it. Game 5, come on, baby. Game 6, we got to win it. Game 6, Simcast to try to win a championship here. Obviously, we have a little bit more time. I didn't mean to do that. But here we go. Game 6 in Sacramento. We got to start with stacking up some championships here. So obviously would love to get it done here against Sac Town. Force the game seven back to Houston. And we should be in a really interesting finals with, I think it was the Indiana Pacers. Yeah. So Halliburton and the Pacers probably. So Matherin and Halliburton are probably developed like crazy, but feel pretty good about my chances here. So got one game seven though. Come on, keep it going back and forth game seven. I'm not going to jump in because I want to make this video too long. Keep the lead, keep the lead. And we are going to keep the lead. Jabari and the Rockets are back in the finals. And of course, we get the Pacers. So the Pacers, they have Nick Smith Jr. So they didn't keep Matherin, I guess. So no longer Matherin. They have Hero. They have Nick Smith Jr. and Halliburton. So this would be our second chance of the video. Game one, we're up one to zero. Great start. 25, 25, 22. Game two, we're up two to zero. So far, so good. Three to zero. And as long as we don't blow a three to zero lead, we bring our second championship home. So that's awesome. I thought about making some crazy trades. Didn't end up doing it. Jalen Green led the way. And we got our second championship of the video. So I think we essentially have like two more seasons left before we're all said and done. So maybe we can end this off with a three-peat. Obviously, it's going to be a huge offseason ahead of us because we are going to lose a couple bench spots in Reddish and then Mac is a free agent. I don't know if we have any other free agents to worry about. Evan Mobley is here. Obviously, be amazing at Evan Mobley. And then, yeah, Garuba is here as well. Obviously, you can't afford to pay Garuba $21 million a year. Reddish, I, I mean, Mac, I definitely can't pay that much money. That's insane. So if he gets that much money, then probably bye-bye to him. Abaji, uh, 20 years old, 80 overall. I mean, we could probably get away with that. Mac, I definitely want him back, but not for that much. And then backup center, Gafford might have to be the guy I go for, or like uh, Jalen Williams, Agruba. I mean, he's been a huge part of what we've been able to do, but he just asked for way too much money. So I'm going to give Gafford a two-year deal, I guess, to be my backup center. So that'll be my new addition to the team to try to, you know, go a little cheaper here. Uh, Garuba, although, like I said, shout out to him. He's been amazing for us in our championship runs. I think he's been on the roster both times we won a championship. So, and then the other one is Mac Reddish. I guess we can bring him back for three years and then we'll have to rely on Mac to come back at his qualifying offer. If we are going to get him back, we're probably just going to run it back. Basically same roster, but we're starting to get over the cap by a ton. We're starting to become the golden state warriors in a way where everyone's just becoming very, very expensive. And eventually I think Jalen Green's going to be paid again, which he's going to ask for another bag. So, yeah, it's going to get tough here soon. But Mac is going to come back as a qualifying offer. Player progression, 87, 82, 91. Mac didn't. Nobody developed like crazy, but we are ready to go for another season. So let's see if we can make it back to back. We'll see. I think, like I said, I think we have two years left. So let's see if we can go back to back here. So second seed in the Western Conference again. We just won a championship last year. So obviously we're hoping we can do kind of that same thing this year. So let's see what our player stats are looking like. So big three still absolutely dominating Mac. We're going to lose him after this season. 13 points per game. So he'll probably become a B somewhere else. Easton with 12 and then 10. Unless we like traded Easton away and paid Mac, I guess. Which, yes, you, we could do technically for this last run. But we'll see. Obviously, I don't even know if we win a championship here. So the Clippers at this point have Brandon Ingram and DJ Wagner. Uh, Julius Randle, Jared Vanderbilt, Laurie Markkinen. So a very interesting Clippers roster. Some only current round against them, and we are going to beat them in five, but now we get the Memphis Grizzlies. Do they still have John Morant? They do not. They have Devin Booker instead. It's so weird, and then Desmond Bain ended up back in Memphis. It's so weird how much guys move around here. So we got like Shea in Dallas, Luka in Miami, and Devin Booker's in Memphis. But game one, or some only current round against them, and we are going to beat them in five. And I get the Mavericks again, which I felt pretty... I was really surprised to beat them last year. So, would not be shocked at all if we end up losing here. Let's see what happens. Game one, we're up 1-0, beat them by 10. 2-0, so far so good, but that doesn't mean they can't get back in it. I might even shrink this down to an A-man rotation again, because that seemed to work very well for us last year. So, yeah. Mac is starting to maybe take over that Tari Eason role, and maybe we should let him. Maybe we trade Tari Eason in this last season. Game four, we win... Game five, we went. So with Mac joining us, it looked like things started to turn around. And then John Morant's in freaking Philly, which is so weird. But John Morant, 
Jeff Howard, Jeremy Sohan, Joel Embiid. So Joel Embiid and John Moran, that's a very interesting duo. Uh, what? How old is Joel Embiid? 35 at this point. Uh, but here we go. Game one. We're uh, down 1-0. John Moran and Joel Embiid giving us the work. But 2-1. Can we even it up? Yes, we can win game five. Yes, we can win in six. And we do just like that. That's back to back. And like I said, I think we got one more run in us. So I think I might do it, man. I might end up trading away Tower Eason here and going with Mac and paying Mac. That might be my move. Uh, my final move, I guess. I don't know if it's a good move, but we might do it. So staff signing. Let's see. I don't even know if we trade away Tower Eason, if we'd be able to pay Mac anyway. Who will see? Because Mac is just, I guess, is going to develop better than Tar Eason at this point. We know what Tar Eason is. And we have to pay Jalen Green as well. So maybe we shouldn't because I don't even know if we're going to be able to pay Mac, but we'll see. If I did throw Tar Eason out there, you got Jeff Howard, Emmanuel Quickly, Carlisle, Primo. If like there's a really good offer that I just can't, you know, ignore, Dylan Suggs, Desumu, uh, Wallace, Sadiq Bay, and then we get Abaji. So we get a third year old Sadiq Bay, uh, back of power four Sadiq Bay, 16 points per game. Clint Capella, Benedict Matherin. I think we do that. Benedict Matherin, are you kidding me? Yeah, I might do this. So Benedict Matherin to end off the video. Uh, yeah, give me that. So Benedict Matherin, even if we don't get McKinsey, I'm Trey away Tar Eason for Benedict Matherin and making that move. So I love the addition of Benedict Matherin here in Houston. Like I said, we'll see if we can pay McKinsey. We probably aren't going to be able to because we have to pay Jalen Green again. So player options, Jabari Smith Jr. declined. So we're going to have to pay him as well. This might be the end of our run here, boys. I don't know if we're going to be able to pay all these guys. I don't think so. Definitely not going to be able to pay McKenzie. Definitely not. Or Mac. I think it is McKenzie, but still. Jalen Green wants $45 million a year, and he has some good offers from the Lakers. Uh, Jabari has no offers yet, and then Mac. So, obviously, top of my priority list is going to be Jalen Green. I'm giving a no-trade clause, and we are going to be the number one. Jabari, same thing. Five years deal. So I'm signing both of them. And then, if it allows me to sign Mac, I'll sign him. If not, then... I guess, you know, it was nice having you on the roster. And yeah, we can. So I figured we were going to be able to. So I guess we replaced Tar Eason with Benedict Matherin, which is our big move. So now we have Washington still. We have Cameron Reddish still with Jalen Green. We got Benedict Matherin now, Jabari. So we need a backup forward and then we should be good. So McKenzie would be my guy, but we're not going to be able to get him back. So Wendell Moore, I guess, is going to have to do. So that will be the end of it. This is going to be the last season. Let's see if we end it, end it off with a three-peat. Let's get it. So here we are as the third seed in the Western Conference back in the playoffs. We kind of figured that'd be the case. I meant did not mean to look at playoff stats, but yeah, we've made the playoffs uh, like basically every year, which has been a success. Honestly, we've been a playoff team for over a decade. The team is still really young with Jabari being 26, Scoot Anderson 26, Benedict Matherin at 13 at 27 years old, Washington with 13 and a 12 from Shingoon. So here we go. We get the Kings once again. I mean, we've owned them so far, so hopefully we can keep that up. They have Lonzo and Tyler Hero now. I might even go to an A-man rotation here uh, like earlier than usual. So our whole lineup is on fire right now, which is kind of amazing. So here we go. So my current round against Sacramento and this might... Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Actually, uh, I actually did my math wrong as well. We we're able to run it back one more year. I don't know why I thought this was going to be the year 2032 already, but it's not. We got one more year. One more year left in the bag for us. So not going to end it off on that note. We're going to run it back one last time. One time for the boys. Staff signing. Steven, we're going to keep him, and I'm going to leave that all the same. Going to go straight to player options. I don't know if we have any free agents to worry about, but don't think we're going to. Maybe I can make one last final move. Actually, it's going to enter the free agent. I mean, this might be... This might. We might not be able to bring him back. I don't know. Are we going to be able to bring him back? Hopefully, we can. Um, I think it'll let me. And then Shingoon. Oh, my. We're not going to be able to pay both of them, are we? Can we, pay, can we pay both of them? Hopefully, we can. Pay both, please. Okay, we we're able to get both. Let's go. Okay, so we we're able to get both of them back. So we have them both locked up. So we keep our core together. Uh, but honestly, I might look to... We got Edward Turner. We need a backup front court player. We are so down bad, honestly, in the bench now. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some of my last few guys that I have. So Reddish will be my backup shooting guard. So let me just throw these guys together and see if like anything good pops up. So, Baisley, sure, why not? I'll go ahead and do that, and that will be my last move of the video. So, Baisley, new power forward. Let's run it one more year. So, last year of running it back, first team of the Western Conference. This team obviously got really expensive really fast, as they usually do. But here we go to see if we can end all this video on a championship. We have to deal with Giannis and the Lakers again. 
Let's see if we could beat them. So many car around. I already have my AM and rotation locked and loaded, and we get out round one this time around at the very least. So now we get the Spurs, who have turned their team into Harrington, George, Jason, Xavier Booker. So just a crazy looking Spurs roster. So somebody come around against them, and we are going to lose in six to end off the video. So that is your 10-year Rockets rebuild. You got Evan Mobley in Chicago versus Webb and Yama. You got the Bulls going on to win it all. So that will end your 10-year Rockets realistic rebuild. This one was a ton of fun. I'm so glad I was able to do a Rockets rebuild because, like I said, it's been so long. Hope you boys enjoyed. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.